Vivid footage showed dead bodies littering the street, but with severed limbs sitting on the pavement in pools of blood. The attack came shortly before a meeting of European community ambassadors to consider imposing sanctions on Serbia. The world's press concluded that the atrocity was caused by mortar bombs fired from a Serbian-held position, and the attack was widely interpreted as a cynical display of defiance by the Serbs. These are photos of the ruins of the National Library in Sarajevo, and the, alleg and the case on the left, an orchestra playing in the ruins. And the allegation is that the Serbs committed cultural genocide by shelling the National Library with the incendiary rounds, but the reality, if we look at the details and put them in their greater context, is that the Bosnian Muslims fired mortars and heavy artillery from the roof in order to draw Serb fire so as to claim victimhood. Steve Collins of the U.S. Army's PSYOPs in Bosnia, Capabilities and Constraints, notes, The Bosnian Muslims' effort to portray themselves as hapless victims was assisted by the fact that nearly all of the international correspondents assigned to Bosnia stayed in Sarajevo. Because of this concentration of journalists in the city ringed by besieging Serbs, many succumbed to sympathizing too much with Sarajevans and losing a measure of journalistic objectivity. The reality, though, is that before much of the press corps flocked to Muslim-held Sarajevo, thousands of Serbs in Sarajevo were murdered in 1992 by Muslim militias, such as those commanded by Mushan, Sato Tobalovic, Shelo, the Black Swans, Green Arrows, and others. Serb forces were often blamed by the international press, despite the fact that many of the graveyards around Sarajevo filled up with Christian crosses. Lenin's Soviet Union had their useful idiots, and perhaps it's time to ask if the Western Free Press has some of theirs as well. The International Committee of the Red Cross estimates that 7,000 Sarajevo Serbs were killed at the beginning of the war by Muslim militias, and yet not a word about it from much of the Western Free Press. As one astute observer commented in a letter to Vanity Fair about the Photo on the upper left, a man digging a grave for Serbs, notes the photo of the masses of freshly dug graves demolishes your Serb bashing. Gregory Copley notes, pictures of dead or wounded or raped Serbs often fills the world's television screens and print media, only to be relabeled as dead or wounded or raped Croats or Muslims. Many Serb victims not only suffer the indignity of defeat and death, they are also used in death as models in the macabre image manipulation operations of the Croatian and Bosnian Muslims. From the New York Times, this says, A Croatian woman grieved with one son yesterday for another who died a result of an attack by Serbian forces in the town of Poshuje in July. In fact, he was killed in fighting with the Muslims. Again, Newsweek claimed that these people were killed by Serbs. They were, in fact, Muslims killed by Bosnia and Croats at Vitez. Some of the most brutal fighting in the war didn't involve Serbs, but rather Bosnia and Croats and Bosnia and Muslims. Here in the, in the Chicago Tribune, we see on the left a tractor and some soldiers on top and nearby. And it says, Residents of the fallen Croatian city of Vukovar remove what is left of their belongings from raised homes Monday. The implication is that they're Croatian refugees. And at the right, the context it's used in says, Lift Croatian sanctions punish Serbs. Gregory Copley notes, The late 1991 battle for Vukovar was portrayed in the Western media as a battle between heroic Croatian defenders against overwhelming Serbian military might. Croats in Vukovar from June 1st to November 23rd, 1991, were busy exterminating those Serb families who had not been able to flee. It was for this reason that the Yugoslav army fought back into Vukovar. At least 1,000 Serbs, mostly women, old people, and children, were shot, knife, axed, and bludgeoned to death systematically. Now, if we look at the details of what we see in the picture, it's quite different from what the claims are in the captions and the headlines. Croatian separatists would not be wearing Yugoslav army caps, as are at least three of the picture in this, in this photo on the left and right. Very clearly, these are Serbs and others identified as Yugoslavs. And this photo says, In eastern Bosnia, where an estimated 200,000 people are under siege by Serbian troops seeking to complete their ethnic cleansing of the region, Serbian women and children grieve for slain relatives during a funeral. 
They show the victims, they say they're victims, but then they blame their own ethnicity for their victimhood. They don't say that it was because the Muslims were slaughtering them. Apparently, some victims are official, some are not, and the selective focus of some photojournalists and members of the press becomes possibly very unethical. The second highest military commander at the re in, in the region at the time, General Charles G. Boyd, noted in his article, Making Peace with the Guilty, to make rational judgments of policy requires a depth of understanding that goes beyond a transient image. For some, the war in Bosnia has become a tragedy of proportions that parallel the Holocaust, an example of plain good against stark evil. For these people, the Serbs are responsible for most of the atrocities. Regrettably, that behavior is not unprecedented in Balkan conflicts, and to say that it is particularly Serb behavior says more about the observer than about the Balkans. Again, the chosen official victim killers are per portrayed in a sympathetic light. Left Bosnian Muslim snipers shooting at Serbs or their own civilians. Now, it's interesting, Sarajevo is in a valley ringed by hills held mostly by Serbs. And this sniper in the upper left picture is actually shooting down. Now, unless he is in the tallest building in Sarajevo, PTT or the Holiday Inn, he very well may be shooting at his own population in order to blame the Serbs. And notice in both of these pictures how these Serbs are labeled. In both of these photos, when Serb soldiers are fighting, they are aggressors, marauders, attackers, fanatics, criminals, but when Muslims are portrayed, they're defenders. General Boyd notes again, much of what Zagreb calls the occupied territories is in fact land held by Serbs for more than three centuries. The same is true of most Serb land in Bosnia, what the Western media refers to as land seized by rebel Serbs. In short, the Serbs are not trying to conquer new territory, but merely to hold on what was already there. Photo District News claimed that this photo was Muslims defending Sarajevo. It was, in fact, Yugoslav troops defending Serb-majority ma city of Vukovar. Both Ron Haviv and Christopher Morris took this photo, and it has been used and misused repeatedly. Time says Christopher Morris's photo on the right was Croatian defenders, but in fact they are Croatian separatist snipers, very often who killed Serb civilians. From the German press on the left, we see Serbian terrorists. On the right, we see a photo from Sergeant Ilich of the AP of Serb troops escorting an old man who had been taking shelter from the Croatian massacres, and again, the Serbs are called terrorists. When a Serbian Orthodox priest in Chicago called the Chicago Tribune to complain about a photo that was misused, the editor said, hey, let's face it, you're the bad guys, and they're the good guys. And indeed, that simplistic black and white mentality may be part of the problem in the West. During fighting between the Croats and Muslims, Croat artillery shot down the old bridge in Mostar. And only years after the war ends does the Western press finally admit what was an open secret in the region, having blamed it on the Serbs. Washington Post and other Western media captioned the left photo as Serbian paramilitaries. But if one looks closely, you see obvious symbols of other groups who had been fighting in the Balkans, such as from the Croatian Shahoknica, or red and white checkerboard, visible on the left-hand soldier's beret and on his colleague's shoulder pollock. And on the right, we see soldiers of the Croatian Rights Party wearing the Nazi Iron Cross and uh, T-shirts that say Cerna Legia, Black Legion of Death. Christopher Morris was taken around by Croatian troops, and they said the body on the upper left was a Croat killed by Serbs. But there's no explanation of the U carved into this victim's forehead, U meaning Ustasha. In other words, he, not knowing the history and cultural and political geography of the region, Took, clearly took them at their word, but when somebody has a U carved on them, it means they were tagged by Croatian extremist Ustasha, who killed this clearly Serb victim. In an interview in Photo District News, Christopher Morris says, for advice for would-be war photographers, the advice I would give is to learn your craft. 
Learn your equipment. Learn your film. Learn how to technically do what you do very well, plus style, before you go out and really try to do something. And nowhere and no time did he say, learn the history, culture, and political geography of the region so you know what you're doing. Arizona Republic said that these were weeping Kosovo Albanian refugees. They were, in fact, uh, the family of a slain Serb policeman killed by American-backed Albanian separatist terrorists. Once again, Chicago Tribune, as the Americans apparently are pondering a military role, as if it was not a foregone conclusion at that point, a clearly Serbian woman in a black dress of mourning was leaving a cemetery, and once again, they blame the Serb snipers for the killing. When Serbs commit ethnic cleansing, it's genocide. When Muslims commit it, being the official victims, notice the terminology that Newsweek uses with Ron Habib's photos. Forced from home, Serbs are pushed out of their villages by Muslim militiamen, whose people have in turn been uprooted by Serbs. So once again, they blame the victim for the victimhood and imply that their ethnic cleansing was gentle. But what neither Newsweek nor Ron Haviv said is why so many of these women are wearing the black dress of mourning. In the ruins of their own making, once again, the Serbs are, as victims, responsible for their own victimhood. General Boyd again succinctly notes, ethnic cleansing evokes condemnation only when it is committed by Serbs, not against them. We must see things in the Balkans as they are, not as we wish them to be. In the upper right, Time magazine says, in Bosnia, the face is a death, and it shows a dump truck unloading several dead, bloody bodies onto the ground. They are, in fact, Serbs massacred by Muslims, but there is no caption information that says that. In once again, the Serbs get the blame. Harvest of hate, Serbian soldiers drag a body out of a mass grave near the Bosnian town of Zvornik last week. They associate the word hate and Serbian soldiers. They don't mention that it was Bosnian Muslim militias who slaughtered these Serb civilians. And this photo from the bottom left, Serb civilians in Vukovar, slaughtered by Croats, went around the world and repeatedly was used to say they were Croats slaughtered by Serbs. Christian Amanpour did a stand-up in 1994 from a Bosnian Croat town called Kisiljak. And she said quite smugly from in front of a market, while the people of Sarajevo are starving, here are the Serbs living in plenty. In reality, the Serbs were receiving very little humanitarian aid, while 98% of it went to the Bosnian Muslim side. Not being able to do that report from the Serb side, she went to a Croat town to be able to get the visual for that. General Boyd notes, Serbian people have suffered when hostile forces have advanced with little interest or condemnation by Washington or CNN correspondent Christian Amanpour. And like many journalists, she was handsomely rewarded for her reporting in the Balkans. For her reporting from the Balkans, Amanpour received a News and Documentary Emmy, two George Foster Peabody Awards, two George Polk Awards, a Courage in Journalism Award, a Wolfston International Film Festival Award, and the Livingston Award for Young Journalists. She also was named 1994 Woman of the Year by the New York Chapter of Women in Cable and Telecommunications and to help CNN win a DuPont Award for its coverage of Bosnia. As Lieutenant Colonel John Sray of the U.S. Army noted, during a series of broadcasts in April May 94, the media, led primarily by Christian Amanpour and some of her CNN colleagues, lambasted General Michael Rose for failing to prevent Serbian aggression at Gorazda. Did these reports represent no-nonsense prize-winning material that validated the Emmy that Amanpour won for her Bosnia coverage? Hardly. They were devoid of any semblance of truth and, if anything, appeared to compromise journalistic standards by failing to verify sources. Most of the damage that was done at Gorazda had actually occurred almost two years prior to these events by Muslims who had conducted their own ethnic cleansing against the Serbs.